Having a physical disability and poor mental health is a battle many are fighting and winning. This is Hashtag I Got This. On this episode of Hashtag I Got This, Becoming a Mother, an Edmonton woman proves you don't need two hands to cook or become a parent. Just like a mom with cerebral palsy who pushed aside her doubts to create the family she desired. Alexis Hilliard is as entertaining behind her camera the screen showing blue. As she is in front of it. My name is Alexis Hilliard. I'm 39. I've got a YouTube cooking show and I was born without my left hand. Some kitchen, some kitchen, gluten-free, vegan eats, some fantastic treats. In Stump Kitchen, Alexis shows off a variety of surprisingly natural ways to use her stump or partial left arm while cooking. And scrape with the stump, scrape with the stump. Just like a spatula, scrape with the stump. As a spatula, as a lemon juicer, as a butter spreader. There's lots of laughing. It's very messy. <laughs> I spill a lot and I use my arm as a tool from spreading butter on toast to mashing potatoes. And uh, yeah, it's just a really fun way to engage with food in an imperfect, hilarious way. She created Stump Kitchen while goofing around at home. Today, I'm gonna show you how I peel a carrot with one hand. And never imagined the impact it would make on herself and others. She shows that anything is possible with a limb difference in the kitchen and in life. Coping with rough times of her own has given Alexis the strength and confidence to put herself and her stump on display after a lifetime of trying to hide it. From the moment she was born, her missing left hand was treated as a trauma. Something weird was laid down in that first experience that just taught me that there was something wrong with my body. And so I've been, yeah, kind of unlearning that throughout my whole life. The teenage years is when one usually starts to care about the opinion of others. That's when Alexis watched a video of a performance with her dance trio. I don't think I had ever really fully understood like how different I looked to the rest of the world until I saw it in that trio situation. Um, and something in me just kind of got, it kind of broke. I realized, holy crap, like I, I'm extremely different. Th nothing can change this. And I think that the big fear was that like, because I was noticing it for the first time so intensely, thinking about how people around me were noticing it and like thinking about their perceptions, what they might think. Like, do they think I look ugly? Do they think that I can't do things? Do they think that I look weird or scary? And so all of those messages were just filling my brain almost for the first time. She had some dark days, but she was able to express her emotions to her mom in a safe space. That helped Alexis move forward in a more mindful way. She has never let one hand stop her from doing things. As a kid, she had an attachment on her stump to hold a bow to play the violin. She also added a strap to the middle of a canoe oar so she can place her stump in it to paddle. And she tightens up her aesthetic on the end of her arm to do yoga. Alexis takes part in these activities, but is still conscious about the way she looks doing them and that impacts her sense of self. I will be either kind of unconsciously hiding my arm, like kind of sticking it behind my back or down my sleeve or like in a pocket if I can, or just trying to keep it out of the public view so I'm not having to deal with people's stares or, because like the mental energy it takes to notice someone staring at you and then decide if I'm gonna engage with that, that just can take a toll. Just because you're an adult doesn't mean that you don't experience crappy stuff around your disability in public. Like you don't have to grow out of it or whatever. Like it's, it's very real and it's, um, you know, it can be really draining. There was this time where I was working at a cafe and this, this guy, you know, came and I was at the till and he ordered a coffee and a muffin or whatever. And he was like, oh, you're so beautiful, but your arm. And I, <laughs> I kind of froze and I was like, Pardon? She was instantly angry and upset. Now her show gives her a positive outlet to share and discuss her thoughts around disability with an audience that understands. How do you feel when people stare at you because of your limb difference? 
I hate being stared at. And I've gotten messages from people like, hey, I, I watched your show and I, I don't feel like I need to hide my arm anymore. You know, I, I've got it out in public and I'm feeling more confident about who I am. And that to someone, it might sound maybe small, but it can be life changing to kind of take away that, that stress or that, that anxiousness that, that we have sometimes. Not only the show, just being in the kitchen makes her happy, especially when she's with her partner, Allison, who, en who encouraged Stump Kitchen in the first place. As I was cooking and really getting limbs on in the ingredients, there was like something really relaxing and like embodied and almost kind of therapeutic about, you know, smelling the garlic and like, you know, having avocado up my stump when I'm making guacamole. It was just like this beautiful experience. And, and I was using my body in this cool, cool way that was like unique. And so quite honestly, cooking and doing my show and like putting my body out there for others to learn from and to experience was this this beacon of like light that brought me through a lot of darkness and it all kind of happened by accident. I'm having trouble. She often has guests on her show, most with limb differences like herself, and she loves connecting with kids. She wants to help them see their potential in a fun way. So this is all you need for ice cream. One, wow. two, three, four, five. Five things. Five! Oh, hell! One of her favorite little co-hosts, even though no limbs are missing, is Joven. Her and Allison's toddler. Deciding to become a parent is an important topic she's discussed on her show. She found out it's a concern for many people with a limb difference, including herself. Honestly, before having my baby, there were a couple times where I would get really anxious around like, okay, how am I going to change a diaper efficiently and carefully? How am I going to you know, dress this child? And I would literally practice on stuffed animals like practice doing up the snaps and stuff um, and I had my first cry a couple months before Joven was born you know around the dressing and just thinking like how the heck am I gonna do this like it was such a weird it kind of felt a bit insurmountable at the time Alexis realized she had to have faith in her own abilities and the first time she held her baby she knew it was going to be okay I've been able to trust like, okay, I, I use my leg for some things and I, I use a pillow for some things and I, I do this thing on the floor as opposed to up, up here and just trusting what my body needs to do to get the job done in a, in a safe and loving way for, for Joven. Registered social worker Andrew Field works at the Family Counseling Center. He says a person needs to determine if they are physically and psychologically able to meet the needs of a child. You may need the guidance of a professional, but don't listen to the opinions of society. There are many narratives and stereotypes out there that are mostly wrong, but which can affect individuals and cause them to really want to second guess their ability. So it's important to, to, if necessary, meet with somebody to help you get straight on what is possible and realistic and what isn't and not use any of those stereotypes to try to determine whether this is an idea for you. A parent with a disability being courageous enough to take on the role of parenting, to me that's a pretty powerful role model, um, a pretty powerful example for any child. There, here, there, everywhere. Alexis is comfortable at home with her family and tries not to feel anxious about the reaction of strangers to her parenting. She's developed her own ways to care for Joven that work. And Alexis is now realizing she has a special bond with her baby because of her stump, one she wouldn't have made with two hands. Stay tuned. We'll be back with hashtag I got this. Welcome back. This is Hashtag I Got This. And someone made a big pile of leaves. <laughs> Enjoying the outdoors with her partner and baby, or even alone, always gives Alexis a mental lift if she needs it. It's just a beautiful way to relax if I'm feeling a bit anxious or things are kind of getting too much. I'll go for a walk, I'll go outside, and it can really help switch gears for me.
Alexis has discovered a number of activities over the years that make her feel good, like music. She teaches ukulele to kids and sings in a choir. When you sing emotional music with beautiful harmonies, it really just like cracks open your emotional self. And uh, so I get to feel stuff on a really beautiful, deep level. <laughs> Listening to her favorite tunes with Joven and Allison always makes her laugh. It takes Alexis back to a time when she had fun with her limb difference. As little kids, her sister even gave her stump a name, one they still use today. She was trying to say baby hand, but it came out as Bebe. So that name just kind of stuck. Um, and then Bebe kind of grew his own personality. So Bebe was like this cute little hero. And then my other arm, my right hand, which is my full hand, um, became like a bad guy and we named him Biggie. And so I would put on little shows for her. She really instilled this sense of like body, love and complete acceptance before I had even internalized any negative societal messages about my disability. Sometimes that wasn't enough. Alexis still had dark times, but her sister Ainsley says that wasn't because of Bebe. Something that I really learned through watching Alexis grow and develop and um, navigate her body through society um, is that uh, her limb difference has never been why she's depressed, why she's been upset. That's not the challenge. The challenge is living in a world that doesn't um, see her for who, her, who she is and think thoughtfully about what she needs to navigate through life. Right now, Alexis is in a better place mentally and wants Joven to see Bebe in the same positive way her sister does. And so far, that's been the case. You know, teething on the end of my stump, that was amazing. Like, using it as a pacifier for many months, like, early on, that was beautiful that not a lot of other people get to experience. And now, Joven plays with my arm almost like my sister used to. It's really, really special. Joven has brought a joy Alexis can't imagine living without. It's the exact same feeling for another woman, Eileen, who also refuses to let limitations dictate her life. So we need butter, margarine, diet pop, gas up, Getting groceries is usually a team effort for the Koshman family. Eileen is a motorized wheelchair user and appreciates the help of her husband and 13-year-old son to reach, lift, and carry. Um, do you want me to grab, or is the freezer too deep for me to grab in there? Uh, depends what you want to get, I suppose. I'm Eileen Lenny Koshman. I'm 39, and I have spastic diplegic cerebral palsy. And it means that I don't have control over the bottom half of my limbs because they're so spastic and so tense that it's hard for me to hold them still. Eileen also has strabismus, where her eyes point in different directions. So she's often looking off to the right and has problems focusing. She was raised by her grandparents who moved around a lot. So she grew up in different small towns, all with one thing in common. Often I was the only kid in a wheelchair. So like kids didn't know how to react to me. They didn't know whether they should come up and say hi. Um, it was really tough because I stuck out and I didn't always want to stick out. I wanted to blend in and just be like one of the kids at school, right? That was nearly impossible as wheelchair accessibility wasn't exactly a priority. So there would be sand below the monkey bars or something would be too high. So I would literally have to sit and watch my classmates play. And so oftentimes that meant that I was alone, kind of in a corner watching everyone else. Watching and thinking in a chair her entire life, Eileen's body may not move, but her brain rarely rests. I've always been an independent person by nature. And so to have to constantly think about where I'm going and how accessible it is really bugs me sometimes. Eileen's grandmother helped her learn to live by herself and cope with feeling different. She always said, don't focus on that. Focus on educating people and making them aware that you're just like them. 
She said, because if you focus on being depressed and sad all of the time, you're never going to move forward in your life. Always focus on finding a different way to do something. Try not to say, I can't. Try to find a different way. So that's kind of been my mantra my whole life. But it's hard to stay positive sometimes. In high school, a classmate spent weeks sending Eileen notes pretending to be a boy who liked her. I thought I was going on a real date with a real guy, and she's like, oh, psych, turns out it was just me. You're actually a loser. And I was like, I went home and cried for days. The wind was just knocked right out of my sails. And so for a long time, I wouldn't talk to the opposite sex because I was just like, are they going to play a prank on me too? You know, it was really, that was really difficult. Still, she graduated, moved out, went on to college, and found an accessible workplace. Not an easy task. Eventually, Eileen also gathered enough courage to try dating online, but she kept her chair to herself. And people would love talking to me. They loved my voice, but as soon as they saw me, they were like, you're in a wheelchair, I don't want to talk to you anymore. After many rejections, Eileen decided to take one last chance with a different approach. No secrets. That's when she met Ryan Koshman. And so I signed up for eHarmony, paid the membership. I call him my $300 husband because we met three days later and I never talked to anybody else. They are truly two peas in a pod. Ryan did wonder if CP or a wheelchair would matter. Turns out it didn't. I am a nerd of a very high order. So I spelled out a lot of jargon and stuff about just I find the oddest things interesting, and she follows along very well. Eileen didn't have to pretend anymore, and the couple learned how to support each other. As soon as I did the 360, and I changed my attitude, and I put in my profile, and I was genuine about talking about my disability, and I didn't avoid it or try to skirt around it, then Ryan came to me. I didn't even have to look for him. Someone else came to Eileen when she wasn't expecting it. A child. She had always wanted to be a mother, but was scared she couldn't do it. We did consider giving him up for adoption because I said, I'm a person with a disability and people are going to judge me constantly. They're al I always am going to feel like I'm looking over my shoulder. Should we give him away to a better home? But no. Eileen shook off her doubts. Her and Ryan knew they could parent together, and Jacob joined their family. He was in intensive care for two months, but that wasn't the hardest part. Stay tuned. We'll be back with hashtag I got this. Welcome back. This is hashtag I got this. Recovering from a C-section with cerebral palsy while her infant was in intensive care is a lot for a new mom to handle physically and mentally. But Eileen also had to deal with judgment. Like the nurses would whisper off to the side, she's indigenous and disabled, how is she gonna do this? When they'd call for Eileen to come feed Jacob, it took her so long to get out of bed. So they'd always chart mother not present, mother always late. Do you know how much like that made me cry? Because it made it look like I was being a neglectful person. I had to work twice as hard as an able-bodied parent or even a non-indigenous parent to say, I'm worthy to take my own child home. Please leave me alone. Andrew Field has been a social worker for nearly 40 years, often working with families. He says all parents have strengths and weaknesses and raising a child is new territory for everyone. I feel pretty confident in saying that there isn't any such thing as a perfect parent. None of us as parents get it right all the time. So whether a person has a disability or not, um, being a good parent is a journey and we all have to work on it. And so I think that uh, there's, there's no reason in my mind why someone with a disability wouldn't be able to work on it just as well as anybody else. Eileen's husband reminds her of what she does offer her son, patience, love, understanding. Ryan says he never doubted her. 
That motherly instinct is, uh, it's a heck of a thing. I know it may sound bad, uh, <laughs> I, I trust her with Jacob more than I trust me. They figured out how to make it work, probably better than many. Um, what wouldn't bond another family bonds us because everybody is always helping. It's a very tight-knit family relationship. The fact Eileen considered giving Jacob away makes her almost speechless today. Oh, I, it would, I, Jacob's the apple of my eye. I would never want to give him away, ever, ever. Being a mom with a disability isn't easy, but that doesn't mean you can't do it. If it's in your heart and you feel it at your core, navigate it and do it the best way you can because if you don't have a family because of nagging doubts, you'll miss out on so much. Like Eileen, Alexa says you have to trust your own body and mind because you are more capable and deserving than you think. It's so incredible. It's hard and it's beautiful and I wouldn't change it for anything. And I'll bet their kids wouldn't change their moms for anything either. Hashtag I got this. Narrator, Martin Yap. Video production, Honeycut Studios. Integrated Described Video Specialist, M. Williams. Content Development Specialist, Jim Crisco. Coordinating Producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director Production, Kara Nye. Director Programming, Brian Perdue, VP Content Development and Programming, John Melville, President and CEO, David Arrington, Copyright 2022, Accessible Media, Inc.